Welcome, everybody, to another great CEO podcast. I'm here with Chris Hearn from Fountainhead. Hey, Chris, welcome. Thanks for having me, Jim. Appreciate it. So maybe you could just, in a few sentences, tell us what you do, who you are, and what your company does. Sure. So I'm the founder and CEO of Fountainhead. We're a nationwide non-bank small business lender. We were the sixth largest or sixth most active, I should say, PPP lender this year. And um, we've been very experienced doing SBA lending for, for many, many years. Well, good time to be in that business, I think, huh? I, I think so, yes. <laughs> um, so what, you know, there are other people that do this. I mean, I've run into them, particularly with PPP and whatnot. Sure. What is your competitive advantage? Why should people come to Fountainhead or why do people come to Fountainhead? Yeah, I think the competitive advantage we have, I'd, I'd summarize it in what I like to call the three S's, which is speed, service, and specialization. Um, most, most of our competitors are not exactly known for those three S's. Um, you know, usually we compete against banks and they're not yeah. speedy. Um, we also uh, often have very high touch service for our, for our borrowers. Um, again, not something you see a lot in the financial services industry. And then our specialization, you know, we're not trying to be all things to all people. Uh, without PPP, we are regular lines of business. We only have three product lines and we think we're the best at those three. We're not trying to do everything. Got it. Yeah. My bank wouldn't even do SBA loans. As it turns right. out. Just half of them out right? there don't. Yeah. Yeah. So what percentage of the revenue recurs every year? It feels like get a client, loan them money, and then adios? Or is there a recurring revenue stream in the business? Uh, there is a slight recurring revenue stream in the business relating to servicing our loans. Okay. Um, but if I had to look at the total gross revenue, it's probably just under 10% annually. So it is a bit of a trans transactional business to some extent. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, got it. So where where is the point of constraint in the business? If there was one thing, you know, got a magic wand, I could tap it, and this makes it what is already a good business, like even a better business in terms of revenue, profitability, what would be the sort of one thing? I'd say we're, we're unique in that we are licensed by the federal government to make SBA loans, which as a non-bank makes us very interesting. There's only 14 of us, eight of which are actually for profit. So for us, it's always about, um, you know, accessing lower cost capital uh, because we don't have deposits like a, cre a credit union or a bank do to go ahead and lend out. So, you know, there is sort of this love hate relationship between us and uh, some of the folks that we compete against. And so lower access to capital is a big deal for us. So, I mean, SBA loans are fairly cheap. How do you find capital, you know, underneath that? So you got a spread to work with. I mean, well, I mean, um, you know, I'm, I'm one of the investors in, in the company. I'm the largest individual shareholder. I've got an asset manager who's a partner and a hedge fund who's a partner. Um, so we're, we're just always on the lookout for trying to reduce our, our cost of capital. So got we it. can steal on our borrowers. Um, okay, that makes sense. So, so how many hours a week are you working nowadays? <laughs> well, I'm radically down from the PPP peak. Um, I think I was close to 100 hours a week wow. for, uh, for the last 18 months. I think I'm down to more like, you know, a manageable 65, 70 hours a week, which is nice. okay. still a little bit high for CEOs, by the way. It's sort of in that 50, 60 wow. range. So you're well, we're still scaling in quite a bit, Jim. So. I don't count, um, you know, thinking time, right? Because that is like, well, when I'm awake, I'm thinking, right? Pretty so, much. Or even yeah. when I'm sleeping, it's, you know, I, I wake up thinking. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So is there one responsibility that you've delegated off your plate? Because as you grow, you've got to move up what you're working on. You've That's got right. to lose some things here. That's right. Give me one thing that you've sort of delegated or moved off your plate in the last six months. Uh, I would probably say, um, you know, credit approvals, underwriting uh, up to a certain dollar amount. I've, I've certainly um, delegated that to a, a few different folks and that's freed up some of my time. But, you know, we're, we're a growing, very fast growing business. And uh, so I'm, I'm very cognizant of trying to work myself out of some of the, the org chart boxes, you know. Good. And, uh, yeah, yeah, as you should. Or you'll be the point of constraint, right? right. You're not right. careful. So give me maybe one or two things that sort of characterize your CEO leadership style that you've learned and that you deploy? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I, I guess I'm the visionary. And so I, I, um, I try to let, you know, my, my very good team run with these things. Um, and I try to just kind of keep us all focused and on track so we can do the best we can and provide the best experience for our borrowers. Got it. Okay. And then maybe last question. Um, what do you do for fun? 
Uh, other so they're than, not working 100 hours a week, right? Yeah. Uh, occasionally, I'll watch a soccer game. That's that's kind of my uh, my hobby, I suppose. I used to play, but I'm I gotten too old. I get too many injuries when I play these days. I hear you. Awesome. <laughs> well, Chris, this was a great interview. I really appreciate your time, and uh, I wish you guys good luck. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. No problem. <laughs>